Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Traffic at Trade Group, and this is your end of day market recap for what is today? Wednesday, right? Uh, Wednesday, and it is the 27th. Uh, we have, what, one more trading day of the month to go, which is tomorrow. Um, all over the place. I, I think today, I think a, a lot of, um, <clears throat> a lot of like, cross or trade wins i would say um in regards to that we have a big like quarter end month end coming up so you know i think one of the things that is interesting today is there's such such big moves and so strong were the small caps and micro caps um today the question that i have is are we going to see a sustained move out of the small caps and is this the start of a move or is this just a lot of pension rebalancing um, that are basically buying some of the underperforming groups and selling some of the winners? Uh, I kind of think that it might be more of the latter, but I think you could also see some, sometimes these types of moves uh, begin to kind of spark, um, you know, follow through moves and momentum traders getting out of, you know, starting to kind of move along, move out of the NVIDIA trade and the semis trade for now and start to kind of look at some other areas of the market. So sometimes that happens, right? Sometimes, and it's the same thing like on the selling side too, right? For example, like when the market starts to kind of break, and I'm not saying that that's what's going on right this second, but when once every once somebody starts like a big fund starts to sell, and after we've been in an uptrend for a while, right, then it causes like, hey, other people are starting to say, hey, let me start to take profits and let me get out. And so that's that first kind of selling starts to kind of ignite, uh, you know, more of a move. So that's something that I think that you're going to want to pay attention until next week. Right. Um, you know, don't forget once we get to next week, right, it'll be April 1st. And that's usually where new money, you know, rather than like rotational money, which I think is what we're seeing, what we kind of saw today. If you judge by all the areas that were up today, take a look on uh, at the left. Right. You've got solar. You know, solar has done nothing <laughs> for the better part of this year. What is what is solar right now? What's what's the performance uh, for the solar ETF? Right. So it this to me like spells that someone is, just, you know, it's down 18.9%. And the example that I was using today, which, you know, um, NVIDIA was down how much today? Like three, it was at 1.3%. It was down two and a half percent. You know, it's, this is being sold right now. And, um, you know, you look at the solar ETF today and some of the other areas, but this is a 5.5% today. So, uh, you know, and not just this area, I'm just kind of using that as an example, but also look at the regional banks of 3.7%. Um, very, very strong. And even the, the utilities. Now, some of this is also generated off of this guy, right? Which is the TLT and the bond move. So, um, you know, I think that's also part of the catalyst and why you saw such large moves today. Um, but um, in any event, let's go through some of the charts and at least like we can try to come up with some ideas so that if we continue to see this kind of rotation into some of the small micro caps, you know, where, um, you know, we might see some continuation. So first of all, let's go through... Um, I just have the S&P chart up here. I mean, this has been kind of crazy uh, in terms of like difficulty level, um, I would say, because it, you know, it depends on your, on your trading style. If you are all about scalping, right, and changing directions, then maybe this is for you. Um, I like more trends. I like to stick to trends. I like to buy things, um, you know, into support in uptrends. But this has just been all over the place this week. You know, big sell program at the end of yesterday, big, big buy program at the end of today. So we're not dealing with a very consistent market right now. And um, I myself, uh, month end is not my favorite time to trade. In fact, it's like my least favorite time to trade because you, you just don't know what you're going to see. Um, on month ends. And, um, you know, sometimes we see normally normal like rebalancing and reshuffling. But to me, this feels like it's, you know, it, it is like a quarter end and um, something bigger going on. But um, we will get through this. And uh, there's only one more trading day of the, of the month. And, um, you know, things might be a little bit 
um, easier um, as we as we get to next weekend and a new month. Um, and they may not, <clears throat> you know, and it's always something that I try to um, basically convey in the training room is, you know, I'm going to have ideas like all the time about what I think is going to happen next, right? And, and sectors that I want to be in and so on and so forth. But, um, but ultimately, like, you know, if we begin to break uh, price, you know, price breaks, and um, if there's some changes, you know, if there's some major divergences, like uh, divert, excuse me, divergences, then um, I, I will, you know, change my mind based on that price action and, and what I'm seeing. So, um, but for now, I, I think like that's a really nice candle after three days of digestion. And, you know, I'm seeing this in a couple other places. So, before I get to those couple couple other places, um, I just wanted to bring up RSP, which is the equally weighted um, S and P, and the um, you know this this was a nice move back to new all time highs. So <clears throat> you know since this break happened um, back in here, you know this has been this been this has been moving nicer. And again, you can kind of see the difference right now with the. Um, this and the, the equally weighted cues, right? One just looks like it has more momentum to it. So I've talked about this over the last couple of weeks and you know you don't wanna necessarily give up on a group. And I hinted at this, yet, uh, if not in yesterday's video, the day before that I was looking at software, but unfortunately look at what happened with software today, right? It was one of those groups that was down today. So it just tells me that you need more time for this, right? And if you, um, you know, dipped your toe into a couple names, um, then, you know, it's it's a little bit painful when you get the timing wrong. Um, but, you know, take a look at the difference between um, IGV and XLV, right, which was our, which is our chart of the day yesterday. Um, really nice move and, and break higher <clears throat> um, on a decent volume today, too. So this is another one. So again, it's important to um, to pay attention to these digestions and sideways action, because some of them are going to resolve higher, and it's possible some of them will resolve lower. Right? And this is the new section that I added to the, um, to the watch list. Right? Uh, I know this is difficult to read um, on your screen, so I will zoom in a little bit. But um, I think for the most part, you can kind of get what I'm what uh, what I'm looking at, um, you know, just adding a couple sectors that I want to watch. And notice I had um, healthcare, biotech, and you know, these are three that are that are like make or break, right? It, I don't want to just put every sector on the list. You know, there's another one that I probably want to watch too, but it's not exactly make or break, but it's XHB, which again, you know, why XHB? Well, because it's interest rate related, right? If we're going to see a further move in TLT, then I want to have some things and and you know, this kind of looks like a, a little bit like the S&P chart that I just showed you, right? Look at the low volume on the pullback, right? So it tells me this this trend is is intact. So now I can begin to kind of look at names. Um, one name that I was looking at earlier that I mentioned was TPH. Again, really nice cons sideways consolidation. How do you like the sound effect there? And um, <laughs> and a break higher. So this looks pretty good, right? And we could also look at some financials, right? I started to talk about. Um, I put this up, put this out on Twitter earlier, but you know, we're, you know, Reddit went had an IPO. Um, what, Astera Labs, I think, was the other one, right? And I think we're starting to hear like the pipeline of IPOs, right? I know that like that was my that was one of my big criticisms when people were comparing the ninety nine market, nineteen ninety all the way back nineteen ninety nine market to today's market. There were back then, and I, I <clears throat> you could Google how many IPOs were in nineteen ninety nine. I think it was like well over two hundred. Um, for some reason, I have in my head 243, but I don't know if that number is right. It doesn't matter the exact number, but there was so many. The reason why I know this is I started as an intern. Uh, it was my first job out of college, or I was still in college. And I worked for like one of the guys at a um, at a brokerage house. And I worked for like one of the guys who was in a corner office. And my job, they had such an inflow, an influx of IPOs and prospectuses. They used to get what's called the red herrings. And the red herrings would sit on file cabinets. And every week in 1999, there was like 
eight of these things that that had to be reviewed every week. There was like eight IPOs that were coming out. So it was my job as an intern to kind of um, sit down with um, the, the the like VP of the office. And, you know, while he was having coffee in the morning, I would tell him about some of these IPOs uh, that 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 were coming that were coming out initial public offerings, of course. And, you know, there was there was a huge amount. Now, today we've got one this week and we've got one. So we're not there in terms of um, all of the 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 amount um, of of IPOs. We're not even close. But who makes money when this when there are IPOs, right? Who makes fees, right? Then I would begin to kind of look at some of some of these in big investment banks because they really, you know, let's let's look at the XLF for a little bit. So again, like this would be like a catch up type trade, right? And um, you know, XLF has been, just been humming along. Um, because XLF has a little bit of everything in it. It's got um, insurance companies. It does have banks in it. It has exchange stocks in it, right? So it's not, some people, they think financials and they're like, oh, that's banks. Well, it's banks and a whole bunch of other different areas of financials that you really kind of have to think about. But when you look at the big investment banks, you know, other than like JP Morgan has just been on, you know, has been uh, the, the best in breed out of this group. But you go back to Goldman, Goldman hasn't done anything in the last three months. Whoops, that's GD, which is actually not a bad looking chart. Um, here's Goldman, right? And and basically since since December, right, this thing has gone sideways. So I think this is you know one of the best looking charts in financials right now. Morgan Stanley, I, I think is interesting too, but you're gonna have some overhead supply. Um Jeffries just re, Jeffries, which is more more like a boutique type firm, had had earnings after hours. I think they beat on their on their earnings. I don't see that big big of a move, but you can kind of begin to kind of look in this group. Another one too that um I profiled the other day was biotech. Look at the look at the candle that that you're getting in um, so far for biotech, right? So this is this is the XBI ETF, right? And I I believe it was yesterday's video that I went over this, um, but um, you know, and and perhaps just a, a tad early. Sometimes I am early with my trades, but it also remember yes, and I talked about I did talk about this in yesterday's video. I was like I was ready to play the losing horn. Um, on this thing because it came out of the value area and it came in and digested. And again, I don't need to be first, right? Some people like to, you know, they like to pound their chest. Oh, I called it. I don't really care about calling it. I care about making money, right? And there, here I have, um, you know, a level to trade against, which is 94.82. And um, notice it's, it has been supporting that 50 day moving average quite nicely. So this is, you know, this is brand new. There's nothing that you missed here. Um, so I, I think this will be interesting if, if biotech gets going. But again, you can kind of look, you know, there, there is obviously in the healthcare ETF, you just like with the financials ETF, you have a little bit of everything. You've got managed care companies, you've got some medical device companies, you've got big pharma in here, and you do have some larger biotech uh, companies in there. Right? And then the last one, um, you know, just to kind of give you a sense, you know, out of these, I would, uh, I actually like XBI and XLV the best. All right. So again, I kind of, um, I, I got very bullish on the healthcare trade in the beginning of the year, but I've kind of cooled off and I had XLV in the TTG trend portfolio and, um, and I took it out about a week ago and uh, I might end up putting it back in. I kept XBI in there. Um, so we'll see. And as we kind of go through sector ETFs, it's, you know, and what I'll do, I, I just haven't had the chance to do it today, but um, I'll begin to kind of like go through the individual names uh, because you want to see the confirmation that you're seeing a lot of good setups in the individual names as well. Now, I like to play XBI rather than the, than the small cap bios because it's just too much risk. I don't like the drug, the... Um, event risk when you have some of these drug studies that come out. We've seen a couple of them go right way, but there's going to be ones that go the wrong way too. Um, it's just basically, uh, you know, how it, how it works with biotech. All right. So um, I'm going to leave it there for today's video. Again, I don't really want to get too far in the weeds because uh, like I said, you know, going back to my first thought, um, that overall, um, you know, you don't know if you're going to really see these move, these continuate continuation, um, if it's just basically, you know, end of quarter rebalancing. So it's something that we, you know, we'll have to monitor 
as we go along. Last trade, which I thought was interesting, was uh, your uranium trade. We saw some calls in this one. I took a starter position in this one. I don't really have like a signal. You know, I think it ultimately has to break 793. However, we're going to be in April soon. So this March value area, notice that the April developing value area is a bit thinner. Um, and it will be a bit easier to cross. So again, I'm very much also on that theme of like power generation. Um, CEG was one of my best trades over the last week, which I don't own this anymore. Um, I, I sold it, this, I either sold it yesterday or at the end of the day on um, Tuesday. But regardless, like, uh, you know, I made a nice, uh, you know, nice profits on this thing. But I think like the power generation, you know, you could look at PWR as well, um, which this is this is in the TTG trend portfolio. I wish I had the CEG in there too, but I have this one in the in the TTG trend portfolio. And um, this one's a, a bit, been a real nice gainer. All right, guys. So I'll leave it there. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.